Eric, I appreciate it. And Jonathan, uh, appreciate you guys uh, Let me know. Uh, I can hear you. I'm just sort of talking at my screen here. just want to make sure uh, I'm live. Um, welcome to the Boat Building in Finland Seminar. Um, it uh, it's, it's an exciting thing. And uh, I've been really, I've had the fortune of since 2013 to really get to know uh, boat builders in Finland. And I've really, it's been a, a fascinating experience. Um, my name is Brian Krantz, and I am the owner and founder of Inside Passage Yacht Sales. Uh, we are up in the Anacortes area. Um, we have been, uh, I've been working in boat sales uh, since about 2004 and really have developed uh, my company specifically to really create relationships with people. Uh, I teach all the sales guys that work with me to, to really focus on taking care of people and making sure you're meeting their specific needs. And it's, it's been an amazing time. We don't always sell a boat to everybody because it ends up there's another boat that's more right for them. But boy, we've just had the benefit of making incredible relationships. And, and one of those relationships were with this, this particular couple uh, as part of their sale. Um, they uh, had been talking about tuna fishing, which I've got some experience at. And they said, well, we'll buy the boat from you, but you've got to take us tuna fishing on the boat. And this is a picture from that trip that we had that was just a uh, wonderful time. If you go to our Inside Passage Yacht Sales YouTube page, there's actually a video of that trip um, taking them out tuna fishing. Now, uh, at no in advance, this boat was not set up to be a tuna fishing boat. So we had to do some special uh rig to kind of make it so it could tuna fish. But uh, that's just a little bit about uh, me and Inside Passage Yacht Sales. I've, I've uh, studied in school um, a number of disciplines, including mechanical engineering. And then I was also a towing and salvage captain for a couple of years as well. So I've got quite a bit of offshore boating experience. Uh, Finland is a fascinating thing. I was, this was probably in about, 2000, oh, 2007, 2007, I saw a pamphlet at the Seattle Boat Show uh, that had a picture of a boat that I looked at and thought, this is like the perfect boat. And it was a boat from Finland. And one of the designing features that is uh, more common in Finland than it is here, it's not every boat in Finland, is that they have a full recessed walk around the pilot house, uh, which I think is really safe and very, very good. And it got me very intrigued with Finland. I didn't uh, actually go and start selling boats from Finland until about 2013, many, many years later. Uh, and as I was getting my own company started, um, I remembered seeing these boats from Finland and decided, I, you know, now's the time to do it if I'm getting this company going. So just a few facts about Finland. 5.4 million people in the entire country. That's just really small. I mean, our the um, King County has over 3 million people. So there's just not that many people that actually live in uh, Finland. Uh, it's, it's a, quite a large, fifth largest country in Western Europe. So there's got plenty of land mass, but obviously as you the farther north you go, the less people there are um, uh, there. We had the, uh, the, quite a blessing. Um, our family uh, had the opportunity to pick up one of the boats that was uh, built at the factory. So we traveled to Finland and we flew into Helsinki and we drove um, in Helsinki you can see Helsinki down at the lower part of the map here. We drove along and up the eastern coast of Finland to where uh, right along the border of Russia. And so it, with the family, we packed a, my family of five in a small rental car and just had a wonderful trip uh, running up there and then turned um, west and drove all the way across the country of Finland into the, uh, this Austro-Bothania region right here. Kokola is the, fac is the factory of the Finnish boats that we represent. 
And, and we, we drove all the way across there and met at the factory and spent some time in the summer home with the CEO of the Sargo boat company uh, before then driving back down the West Coast and around to Turku where we met our boat and began our trip um, to Germany. Uh, and we spent three and a half weeks of the summer uh, doing that uh, whole trip. It was a, just a wonderful, wonderful time. But interestingly, the highest boat density in the world in Finland, one in seven people have a boat. Uh, it's incredible. We, I went to the boat show, it would have been in 2014, to the uh, Helsinki boat show. And I had just been at the Seattle boat show that at that time. At the Seattle boat show, we had uh, we were we we're always happy if we could get about 50,000 people to come over nine days. This is back, obviously, pre-COVID. And um, it's a nine-day show, 50,000 people. That was a good show in, in Seattle. Now, Seattle's the largest show in, on the West Coast of North America, uh, uh, so that we get a lot of people there. Uh, we went to the Helsinki Boat Show, and even though they have boat shows in, in Finland, in Sweden, in Germany, all around there, uh, they pulled in 70,000 people in five days. The Finns are very, very serious about their boats. It's, a, it's an incredible thing uh, how many boats that they have. Uh, Finland is covered in lakes. Lots of it is very flat and You'll, the water in the lakes isn't necessarily deep, but there are lakes all over the place. And so lots and lots of houses are accessible only by boat. You can only get to and from them uh, by boat. It's an interesting thing. Uh, and we had a great time running across the interior. There's all kinds of fun stories about uh, when they were fighting wars, the, they would bring tanks across the frozen lakes in Finland. And then they feel like there's a lot of places in Finland uh, that there, there's uh, tanks at the bottom of many lakes uh, from during war times. Like a lot of all the places up north, there's times when the, the sun never sets and times when the sun never comes up. It can be a very cold, dark, place during the winter months and many if not all of most of the Finns are always anxious to travel. Uh, when the boat builder we work with is there, they have a special boathouse where they heat the water slightly so that they're able to put boats and water chest them in there because everything freezes uh, solid, the ocean, the whole everything uh, around there. But in this very, very small country, there's over 100 manufacturers of boats uh, boat and boat products. They sell 75,000, 7,500 boats a year, but import 1,500 of them. Historically, Finland exported many, many, many more boats. Uh, nowadays, uh, they don't export nearly as many as they used to. Um, you can see on the map there, this region here, which is the Austro-Bothanian region, is one of the biggest boat building regions in Finland. You know, uh, folks, also, if you have any kind of a question or a comment that you want to do, don't, don't hesitate. You can type it in, uh, raise your hand, and Katie will let you uh, talk about it too. But I'm, I'm, it's not a problem to get interrupted if you have, uh, you want to hear a little bit more about something. Um, it, it was interesting when I went to Finland and got to tour the factories there. It because it is such an established process uh, or building there that we were able to see that they almost have industrial parks that are only for boat builders. So the boat builder would have their special boat they would build, but the, all the companies in that industrial park would use the same rail maker, we would use the same uh, engine. Uh, delivery guys. They would have a lot of the same uh, equipment was made in a from a local uh, group for a bunch of different brands by the same uh, subcontractor. It was really common. These are some examples of some of the boats. I definitely noticed uh, a big difference when I was at the boat show in the boats. Uh, the boat, I didn't see almost any boats that I've ever recognized before. Uh, in, while I was at this boat show, the, what, the boat show in Helsinki was dramatically larger uh, than even our biggest shows on the west coast of North America. Uh, many, many more boats, 
but not a single, well, maybe a couple, but almost none of the brands. Now, interestingly, when you went up to the accessory area at that boat show, uh, you could see that all the accessories were identical to what we are using in our thing. The, both the boat show accessory areas were the same. It's just the boats that were uh, different. These are some of the, and now lots of smaller boats, but also uh, very popular big boats as well. This gives you an example of some of the different, um, the, you know, they do aluminum boats, they do fiberglass boats. They're absolutely, this is an ABS plastic boats in Finland. Another aluminum boat uh, country, lots and lots of aluminum boat, uh, aluminum built boats in Finland. Uh, here's another aluminum one, small skiff. This is Targa. Uh, I'm a, we're a dealer for Sargo and Targa is the, our, our, our biggest competitor uh, there and the other things. So very, both companies are 50 years old and have um, the, are o both family owned for multiple generations. And they have been brought up. All, all the families know each other. The kids all know each other. Um, I, when I was out there, sometimes it's hard. The Finns are very, uh, kind of hold their cards a little close. They don't, they're not like Americans where we just start talking about stuff. You, you have to ask them questions and sometimes they're a little slow to, to answer things that they might consider a little more personal. And one of the things that I was trying to get to understand how the Sargo company and the Targa company uh, were different. And, and it was interesting. I think a lot of the differences between the boats can be described by the companies, um, how the companies have established. Targa, the founders of the company, as best I understand, uh, I think it's still current, is that the founders of the company still run the company and the families, the children and grandchildren of the founders uh, operate in the company. Uh, with Sargo, uh, the, this is the Sargo boats here. Uh, the Sargo company, the founders of the company have either sold or given the, the company to the, their children. And then they in turn have either sold or given it to their the grandchildren. And the elders have stayed on a board as an advisory role, but the ownership is with the grandchildren. And I think there's a lot of uh, interesting things about the different, those two different boats that you'll see um, uh, it, that that have are, are are related to that type of management style. How the management style is. Um, uh, these are uh, a, a, the they build right now. Uh, Sargo is building between twenty five and thirty six foot boats, and you can see the full recessed walk around uh, on every one of these boats. Even the twenty five foot boat has a full recessed walk around. That is what really excited me and drove me to uh, understand that boat. Uh, uh, and, and become a dealer for them. We brought the very first Sargo to the West Coast of North America in late 2013. Uh, this is where uh, we are located here in Anacortes. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to contact us and uh, you know check into different things, uh, uh, look, into, uh, at, look at different boats or whatever, you feel free to contact me and let me go. And um, uh, let me, uh, do we have any questions? Anyone have any interesting things wondering about the different boats they saw there uh, in the uh, types of boats from Finland? Uh, uh, questions about uh, interest in European, other European boats? I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. I'm gonna scroll through uh, some of the different models. So you can just uh, see if any of those perk your interest and you have questions about them. Finland is also the producer of the Swan sailboats too. No questions? I thought, I thought we would uh, have a good amount of time for uh, answering questions here, but it doesn't sound... Um, are people familiar with the full recessed walk around boats? Have you guys seen those before? Brian, we have a question. Oh, good. Thank um, you. Yeah. So Sweden builds some fine sailboats. Finland builds sail. 
uh, yes, both, the Swan sailboats are from Finland. Uh, what some of the finest sailboats uh, made anywhere. Both, uh, it's interesting, a, a very fascinating when I was visiting there. Uh, if you travel to Finland uh, and you, you look at each street sign and the street signs are, two, each street has two names. One's a Swedish name and one's a Finnish name. And I, and I had to ask, I'm like, why are there two names uh, for every street? And it was intriguing to know that, um, you know, Sweden had operated uh, in Finland quite a bit. And so they, they compared, they, many people spoke Swedish as well as Finnish. And as you were closer to the Russian border, the Finnish name was at the top of the street sign and the Swedish name was underneath. But the more you moved west, the closer you got to Sweden, there was typically more Swedish speaking people and the Swedish name for the street was above the Finnish name of the street. I thought that was quite interesting and uh, unexpected to see. I think the Nauticat boats uh, is, have been a, a great hit and people have really, really liked them. Uh, and it's been a very, very uh, a good, a good boat out of Finland. <laughs> very nicely finished, yes. That comes up all the time when we're selling the boats, showing the interior finish. The woodwork on the Sargos in particular, uh, is, is as fine as the finest custom yacht out of North America. I mean, their, their woodwork is just impeccable, the joinery and whatnot, they're, they are so, so particular. When I had the opportunity to tour the factory in Sargo, I was just stunned at how spotlessly clean it was everywhere, how everything was, uh, all the tools had special locations and put together really well. It was, it was really an impressive, uh, building facility in their manufacturing. They really did a nice job. I don't quite understand that one other question there. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about our trip then, uh, where we left from uh, Turku and traveled across the Baltic Sea. We, we went uh, up over the Baltic Sea and, and came down the east coast of Sweden uh, to a place just below Stockholm where we entered the Uta Canal. Uh, that's um, Uta is G, um, G O, oh, I'm gonna forget how you spell it, but they you pronounce it Uta. It doesn't look like Uta when you when you see it. But we entered the, U the Uta Canal and we traveled from one side, the east coast of Sweden, all the way to the west coast of Sweden in a boat on a canal. Uh, sometimes the canal is very uh, narrow, just big enough for two boats to pass. Every road going north and south in Sweden, every train track, every road, everyone either went under or over uh, this canal, or there was a bridge that had to mechanically be moved so we could get past. We ended up going up 330 feet in, through locks and then back down 330 feet to get into the ocean between uh, Sweden and uh, Denmark. Uh, it was an amazing trip and we had an incredible amount of time. I was thankful for having all three of our kids so we could use them as deckhands for fenders and stuff, uh, fending off other boats in these small locks. It's a historic uh, canal that was a big deal uh, initially in Sweden for um, commerce, but now obviously was used primarily for recreation. Uh, once we got to that part, we crossed the sea then over to Denmark um, and went down the east coast of Denmark into another canal that was at the very northern part of Germany where we traveled across to the North Sea. Um, came out into the North Sea and traveled to the Frisian Islands in the North Sea and then back down to Bensersiel where we left the boat uh, to have it shipped the rest of the way back to the United States. Uh, stayed a couple nights in Hamburg. It was a wonderful trip 
Uh, if you go to uh, the Inside Passage Yacht Sales website, there is an article that was written by a passage maker uh, about our family's trip. It was a lot of fun. Has anyone else uh, been, had an opportunity to go boating in Europe? We had, a, we had a hope before the COVID hit, our plan was to have a Sargo delivered to the East Coast near New York and to take a Sargo from New York uh, through the canals to Chicago and then have it uh, trailered from Chicago uh, the rest of the way across. So I was excited to take the family there, but we uh, had to, of course, cancel that trip due to the COVID crisis. Well, uh, any other questions about uh, the, some of the boats in Finland or uh, traveling in there? One of the other uh, trips that I would really like to do would be to go to pick up a boat in Finland and then travel to the uh, southeast uh, to Estonia. Uh, interestingly, a, a lot of the people who work in the boat building factories in Finland are actually from Estonia. Uh, they uh, immigrate for work uh, to Finland and uh, are very good workers in the boat factories there. But to go Estonia and then south all through Lithuania, Latvia and uh, Poland uh, to come back up into the German area where the boats would then be shipped the rest way across. I think that would be a really fabulous trip. Not nearly as many nooks and crannies. That coast on the eastern coast there is uh, much more, much further and for between and lots more open water between two different uh, places that you can spend the night, get, you know, get off the ocean. I think maybe I'll, I'm going to go right back to the beginning of the seminar and just sort of scroll through the whole uh, the whole thing. And in, if anyone can think of any questions, I'll be standing by here for a little bit and would be happy to uh, answer anything that you might hear, that you might have. We have a question in the chat. Ah, let's see. Uh, it's it, that was one of the benefits of staying on the northern route um, through those Euro countries. Uh, all all the the countries we went through were all part of the eurozone. Not all of them used the euro currency, so we had to deal with currency exchanges. But there, once we entered into Germany, there was no other customs or border crossing issues. We, we literally just could pass from place to place. And it was, uh, it made it so, so simple and easy. Um, we were worried about a bunch of different things, but we could get a very inexpensive insurance policy. I wanna say it was about $1,200 for uh, eight weeks to insure the boat while we were in all those countries and traveling all those places. It, it worked out really well. Um, most of the countries, uh, the younger people knew English uh, quite well. So we had a very easy time uh, communicating almost everywhere that we went. It was uh, particularly, uh, I have Swedish heritage. My last name, Krantz, is of Swedish nature. And we were excited to visit some family that we had never met uh, in Sweden. And I was worried they lived sort of in a kind of in the center of the country. And I thought, oh, we're going to be out on the coast. It's probably going to be too difficult for us to, to be able to visit them. So, uh, but once I discovered this Uta Canal, I realized that the Uta Canal went to through, went through two great lakes, um, two great lakes in Sweden. And my family lived at the very Southern end of one of the great lakes. Now that's about 60 miles from where the canal went into the Great Lake, but we traveled into that lake in our Sargo and then 
all the way down to the southern end. So we actually visited family members that we'd never met before in their hometown by boat. It was quite exciting. And uh, my cousin uh, broke down into tears when we arrived into this tiny little marina that never had transient boats visit uh, right there and visited them in the town of Yan Chopping, uh, which is the very southern end of Lake Vanner. Very, very fascinating uh, areas there. Um, we made a habit uh, on the way th through the lake uh, there was a small island and we spent the night at this island. Uh, and when we went up, uh, we were touring and we made a habit of walking through graveyards periodically and seeing them. Our last name, Krantz, my wife's last name, uh, uh, Riceus, uh, we went walking through the graveyard and I went of, of a thousand graves, I bet there were 200 Krantzes. I've never seen anything like it. It was just incredible to see that in this very unique location in the middle of the Great Lake in Sweden. Oh, the coastal craft uh, compared to a, a comparable size Sargo. It's interesting because um, the there are a lot of similarities. They come from different angles. The coastal crafts obviously are aluminum build. They're very strong, very sturdy, very stiff. Uh, Sargos are fiberglass build, but the nature of their construction, which is sort of uh, similar to a two-hulled construction, uh, and then they fill it with foam, uh, which the Coastal Craft does a lot of foaming for insulation for sound. The Sargos are remarkably stiff. Both those boats are very, very solid in their feeling, don't have a shimmer and a shake and a rattle. Uh, they're very, very finely done. The woodwork, I believe Coastal Craft is one of the finest woodwork uh, fit and finish boats there are in North America, the Sargo matches it. It comes right there. So it's a real comparison. The, the differences, they're both Volvo powered. They both have a lot. I used to be the sales manager actually for Coastal Craft. Uh, so I, I, um, I know those boats very well. In fact, I was just out in a Coastal Craft uh, for a sea trial today. I'm going to go to the um, Sargo page here. But the the Sargo does an amazing job of including an a, incredible amount of amenity in a relatively small boat. So I would say for um, the sleeping spaces and the bathroom, like for instance, our, our 36 Sargo has a king size back berth with a, a half bath compared to a, a queen with no bath in a 40 foot coastal craft. Uh, our 36 Sargo forward has uh, similar to a coastal craft has a walk around queen forward and a sh separate shower and bathroom. Uh, but the, you can seat more people at the table in the Sargo. Uh, th there's just an incredible amount of space in a smaller boat uh, in a Sargo. It's, it's uh, I, I think, I think is really uh, quite an impressive thing. Um, similar speeds, they both are, are very seaworthy boats. The European Union will um, categorize their boats. They have a, a, a we, here in North America, we have the ABYC standards, which are a measure to make sure they're a high quality in their wiring and components, uh, some standards there, but we don't for some reason include stability in the ABYC standards. In Europe, they have the CE standards, which cover all the electrical things that we cover with the ABYC, but they also add in a stability uh, measurement. And the, the Sargos are a category B offshore rated boat, which means that they've been certified safe for travel in gale force winds with 13 foot seas. It's quite impressive rating. And they do have a category A rating. The Sargos don't meet that, but the category A rating has the same stability requirements. It just wants redundancy of all the systems in the category A. The, the, the category A rating means it's totally self-sustaining. You can just stay on the boat. So they do that for the more world cruiser boats. But stability-wise, it's the highest rating that they uh, are able to achieve in, in Europe. Um, Coastcraft doesn't have that rating, although I believe it would meet it. Uh, that their coastcrafts are built very, very stable and uh, excellent. Um, 
trying to think some of the, they're both really quiet operating because of the foam insulation and stiff. Um, there's, you do have a lot more amenity, I, I believe in the uh, Sargo for the smaller sizes. Um, part of that is the uh, aluminum construction. There's, it's the Coastal Crafts are built with aluminum very strong with frames inside. So the interior dimension of, of a Coastal Craft is sometimes a little bit smaller. Uh, both are similar speeds, similar fuel economy. Uh, Sargo does not offer larger sizes. So Coastal Craft goes up to 65 foot, although um, uh, we expect they will have some larger sizes in Sargos before too long. Anything specific about comparing those boats that you have interest in? I have a person who is raising their hand. Kim mm. Gajal, I'm going to take you off of mute here. If you can go off of mute, Kim Gajal. Oh, hi, Kim. You got to push that little uh, red microphone looking icon. Um, Gajal, you are on speaking mode now. So if you want to go off of mute, we can answer your question. The, the larger Sargos that should be announced relatively soon have, will have IPS drives. Because Sargo only stops at 36 foot, uh, a 36 foot boat wouldn't be proper with IPS drives. The new, the new Sargos are all the new Volvo DPI drive, which is a stern drive, but it's all hydraulic shifted. It's a very exciting uh, new product from Volvo with stern drives. And they have all the same uh, capabilities as the IPS drives, but uh, soon you'll have uh, bigger Sargos with, um, with IPS. Okay, it doesn't look like we're getting Kim off of mute. Sorry, Kim, if you wanna type in a question, uh, I'd be happy to try to answer it for you there too. Uh, Herb, thank you uh, very much for your uh, questions. Uh, feel free to contact me about any, any uh, other things that I can help with. Looks like we are all good going through our questions. No more questions in the Q&A or in the chat. No hands raised. Uh, thank you for uh, hosting, Katie. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Finland. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, Oh, here we got here we got a couple of questions. That's great. Uh, they do they do extremely well. We've been very very happy with uh, the Sargas we've had here. Again, uh, we brought the first one here. It's a 2013 model, and I know that the owner uh, still is enjoying it immensely. Uh, and the Sargos in Europe, it's a 50 year old company, and they've they've done extremely well um, in uh, holding up. One of the neat features on the Sargos is they put a stainless steel bar down the keel. Oh, let's see, which boat would you recommend for long trips, short trips? Um, I, you know, I, I'm a big, well, uh, when you say which boats, Sandra, mom, is that you that's asking about trips, long trips or short trips? I, we carry a, another boat that's a Parker that's a more of a day boat for fishing trips and stuff like that. Much simpler on the inside, not nearly the amenity. Uh, but I do believe for longer overnighting cruising type trips that the Sargo is, is one of the best options that you can have um, because they really give you an incredible amount of amenity without needing to be in a big slip or being able to get into small coves and things like that. I, it's one of my favorite boats for those, those types of trips. 
Sandra was asking about which boat would I recommend for longer trips or shorter trips. Uh, I, I do believe that the Sargos, uh, like a trawler or things like that, have a lot of uh, interior amenities uh, that's, that make them really nice for long trips. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, log off here now, and if I, I'll be back uh, at three o'clock, and look forward to uh, 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 seeing anyone else that might want to talk about which boat is right for them. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Uh, all right. To all of our attendees, thank you for joining our boats afloat seminars day two. Like Brian mentioned, um, we have another seminar at 3 p.m. If you scroll through the chat, there is a link in there for you to register for that last seminar of the Boats of Float series. We look forward to hosting you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Everyone have a great day.